This tutorial will deal with website creation. We'll be using um, a fairly simple plug and play website called Wix.com. Now Wix makes life very easy because really what we're doing is we're just adding elements to a website. There's no programming. There's no um, difficulty involved in creating it. So what we'll do is we'll just kick off by having a look at, at the new stage we're, we're dealing with, which is implementation. So we've, after dealing with uh, the idea analysis and strategy, which was uh, the first stage of our or the first part of our um, um, module and assignment one is dealing with that. Now what we're moving into is the implementation phase, which we're looking at a number of digital channels and how to create them. So these are the different channels that we're going to look at over the, the next maybe 15 or 20 tutorials. But anyway, um, we're going to look at websites right through blogs, social media, crowdsourcing feeds, reviews, ratings, emails and other um, other types of digital channels. So I'm going to jump in first off, first of all, into websites. In websites, we're going to look at two different categories. One, site, one is called website creation, which we're going to use Wix. And the other one is pay-per-click campaigns, which we look at the um, we look at the likes of Google AdWords and Facebook ads and so on. So um, we look at all those different types of paid campaign. So we'll move into website creation first of all. In here, we're going to have a look at website design without coding. We're not dealing with HTML, hypertext markup language. We're going to look at uh, and there's there's loads of websites out there that will actually help us to create websites without the real need for coding or any technical expertise with regards to uh, creation of websites. Um, so there's a lot of them there. They go everything from, you know, with regards to WordPress um, to, you know, XPRS to simple site and so on. So uh, there's a lot of different options here. The one we're going to be dealing with is going to be, as I said, is going to be Wix. Um, and Wix allows us great flexibility and allows us to be able to customize our approach. And there's very little in the way of advertisement on the site. So um, it's it's the best option for us. We'll have a look at how it works and what's going to happen with it. So the first thing you do when you go to Wix is you sign in. Uh, it's free to sign in. And uh, so you type in your uh, email address and a password, and then you sign up. And um, once you do, um, we're going to skip through a couple of stages here and then you click on template. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a website using a template and we're going to add our own different elements to it. We're going to learn how to do that over the next uh, little while during this tutorial. So um, it allow us to choose categories. Um, and these are like, you know, if you're if you know your website's going to be around online stores or photography or videos, my advice here in this case would be I really wouldn't focus too much on these different areas here because what is really important here for, from our perspective is that we get the look and the feel and the design of the website right. We can add all the other elements that we need to later on. So, you know, if you're saying, oh, I'm looking for a, you know, a restaurant based website, but I'm really not happy with it with any of the kind of templates that are there for that. But there's some really nice one under photography. Well, I would go with that one. Um, because we can we can customize all of the actual websites to suit ourselves. So I'm going to jump across into um, into Wix here. Size my screen here, and as you're going in, you're given this option here to choose a template. As I said, I'm not really going to worry about this. I'm going to create. Uh, the example I'm going to use here is one which is called Walk With Me, which is a, a hiking website for Ireland. The whole idea of trying to promote different routes and different hikes and so on and trying to just uh, uh, promote wellness and so on. So really what category does it fall into? It probably falls into fitness or wellness. OK, so I'm just going to have a look at this and it doesn't really make any difference to me which one I choose. So I'm just going to just under you know, fitness here, I'll just choose this for a second, okay? It gives me, the, it asks me the question, do I want to deal with uh, um, Wix ADI or do I want to create your website with the editor? Now, when we're starting off first, I'm gonna go with choose templates and create the uh, website with the, with the editor here, okay? 
What it then does is it gives me a number of different uh, templates, all of them around uh, fitness and well-being. Okay, um, if in doubt, if you don't find something here you like, you know, when you hover over them, it'll say edit or view. Some of them will even have prices on them, but not very many of them, as it turns out. And there's lots more choices down here if we can turn around and just click on them and so on. So you can see here, oh, you know, choose one that 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 you think looks good and looks kind of what you, around what you're trying to, to figure out. Remember, when you, um, in the last section under strategy, you, you went into storyboarding. So if you've already a, a, a layout in mind, you might try and find one that suits that. Or, you know, now that we know this is around, maybe at this stage when you're creating your actual um, design specification and you're actually looking at your uh, storyboard maybe you'll base your storyboard on a template that you see here so i'm just going to go back to all templates here for a second and this gives me uh, all of the the templates at our disposal and as well you know as you can see there's there's you know a lot of website or a lot of templates here to, to pick from i'm just going to choose this one here you get get the two options to edit or view so for starters i'm just going to click view and this will show me what the, the website actually looks like, the way it moves and the way it, it actually, you know, it, it, the way it actually, uh, you interact with it. And you, can, and you can see how engaging it is. So you can go, how about services and so on. You can click on these links and so on, see how they work. All right. And this is the one I, I'm, I'm happy enough to go with. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit this site and I'm going to start from scratch and you know, of course, I can change every aspect of the site if I want to. So I'm going to edit the site here. So it brings me into um, the editor here and you'll see this and it's putting it together. And once I get in here, I can then turn around and start working away on, on changing it to suit my own needs and to, to do different things. OK, so just waiting for this to, to, to go through the process. And it shouldn't take too long. Um, and then I, I'll start introducing you to the way Wix works and um, the way that you can handle the different things. OK, so I'm going to skip the, the initial start video here and I'm just going to have a look at a few things here. You can see the actual site here. OK, now for starters down along the left hand side, you can see a menu uh, which has menu and pages, background, add. Now add is, we're going to spend a lot of time in there because they're all the elements of the page and we'll see those in a few minutes. Add apps, media, my blog and bookings. Now, for the first, you know, time we visit the site, we'll see these lists. Then after that, you just see the icons, which are fine as well. So um, what I'm going to do is just introduce you to the menu up here on top. We're going to skip some of it, but uh, you can see if I just click on the down arrow here, it shows me all the pages that are involved. So these are my site pages, home, services, more about me, feeds, motivational reading and blogs. You can see those across here. And then there's other pages as well, okay, in the, in the members section if you go into it, okay. So they're behind a kind of a password protected area. Now, at any stage I want to, I can add other pages to my site or I can take pages away that I no longer need or don't want to use, okay. Uh, so that's the first thing. We'll come back and we'll be spending a, bit, a good bit of time in there. Next one is a desktop versus the mobile view. So I'm, we're in the desktop view. If I look at the mobile view, just click on this for a second here. It gives me what the actual site looks on a mobile device. OK, and it'll be slightly different. You can see that you'll have um, you'll have your menu here and this is the way it'll look. OK, so I can scroll up and down as well. Now, the beauty of Wix is that if I spend all my time on the desktop, it will create a mobile version of this for me automatically. So my advice would always be spend your time on the desktop, get your content on, then look at the mobile version and you can take things out in the mobile version if you don't want them there and so on. OK, so I'm going to go back to the desktop here. And um, then the menu here, site, settings, tools, development mode, help and upgrade. Now I'm going to completely skip all of these because I'm going to spend very little time in here at all. OK, I'm moving across here. You can search. All right. You can um, hire partners. This zoom in and out is very useful for especially later on when we start creating maybe longer pages. It will allow me to move sections so I can actually move a section up or down. 
delete a section or duplicate a section. And, you know, if I, if I don't want this tab here, I can get rid of it, all right? Or if I want an extra tab like that, I can duplicate it and so on, okay? And you'll see me doing this as we go down through the site as well. So it's very useful. That's the zoom view. Um, then there's the undo and redo, save, preview, and publish. Now, these three buttons here, very, very important. If I go save, it will save my changes. If I go preview, it will allow me to see what the user will see. Okay, so the fully workable site, it's a bit like in PowerPoint, the difference between when you're designing something and then the PowerPoint show. PowerPoint show will have all the um, interaction involved in it and so on. So the preview will show you what it will look like in a browser. And then finally, publish. Publish means that you'll make your changes available to the general public. Okay, and in during that, the first time around you use that, it will actually allow you to change, to choose a name. Um, for your site and so on. So again, choose well, okay? So um, as I can see here, these are my 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 different things down along here and I can, you know, change any of these things I want to and so on. So what I'm gonna start off doing, first of all, is going into menu and pages here, okay? Um, and you can see these are my main pages here, home, about, services, more about me, feeds. They're hidden at the moment. You can see that they actually have little, uh, eyes with a cross them that are hidden at the moment, motivational reading, blogs, and contact. And they're exactly what you see up on your menu up here, okay? I can add a page, I can duplicate pages, and so on. We'll see all of those as we move down through them. You'll notice when now all of these things have gone into icon mode there, and the only are visible when we go menu and pages. So what I'm gonna do first of all here is I'm just gonna change a few things. First thing I want to do is to show you how you add a page. I'm just going to add a page. It adds it here directly after where I was. I can call it a name. So I'm going to call it my one media and click on done. You'll notice it appears in the menu up here as well in that position. If I want to move it, just say I want media to appear um, in between services and motivational reading. I actually move my cursor over it here. Again, I'm if just to remind you where we are, we're in menus move your cursor over media and drag it up or down. So if I want to, to appear just after services, I drag it down there and you'll see that it changes on my menu. Okay. Now I'm in my media page at the moment. My media page is, is you can see that my header up here on top and my footer down here in the bottom are visible and there's nothing else on the page because I'm after creating a brand new page. So if I want to delete a page, what I can do is I can come down here. At the moment, I'm just going to get rid of my click on blog here in a second. It'll bring me to my blog page. And I'm going to delete this page. Now, how do I do that? I come along here, click on that, and just go delete. It lasts me, are you sure? I'm sure, I'm sure, and go delete, okay? That page is, is removed from my list there, as you can see. So, so far I'm after adding a page called media, deleting a page called blog. Now, the next thing I want to just show you here is if I want to add a page, which is a sub page to something. So at, in other words, when I hover over, it will show me a menu. So I'm just going to add a new page, add a page. I'm going to call this one media one. It's a ridiculous name, but I'm just going to call it media one. What I'm going to do is you can see home media one about services media. So what I'm going to do is make media one a page on, on the media menu. So I'm just going to come down here, drag my media one down under media and then drag it in. Just drag it in slightly and you can see that it indents. If it indents, it means that it's now a sub menu of this. You can't really see it on. It's no longer on my menu, but if I go to preview, Hover over media, you'll see media one appears below that, and I can go to that. Okay. I'm going to go back to my editor. So what I've actually done there is I'm after adding a new page, deleting a page, indenting a page, and moving it around. Okay. Um, I'm just going to while I'm at this, I'm going to delete this page. I don't particularly want it here. Okay, so media one is, is gone, all right? Now, 
Just before we move on and start adding elements to pages, what I'm going to have a look at next is very simply, I'm going to have a look at a few settings to do with pages. So I'm just going to click on my home page and go setting. Now, what is my home page? Well, very obviously, when anybody goes to my site, the home page is the page that appears first. You can only have one home page. So as you can see on this one, it says, this is your home page. On other pages, you will see options to make as a home page. Now, if you make, for instance, media as your home page, it will then remove home as your home page. But um, so the first page here allows me to put in the name which is the equivalent of putting up here. I can just do the same thing here. If I click and then click on it again, it will allow me to change the name here. I can hide it from my menu. Now, hide it from my menu is you don't want it to appear on the menu, but you want it has, as a page on your site. Now, why would you do that? Well, just say you have information. Just say you want to add a page called um, Terms and Conditions. Do you want to have Terms and Conditions as a menu item? Probably not. Do you want people to be able to access them if they want to? Yes, you probably do. You might have it from something in your footer or you might have it on the on the sales page or when somebody is going through the sales process. OK, so something like that, where there's quite a, a few options that you might want to have as pages available on your site, but not available through your menu. OK, so layout is next. As you'll see from the layout, there's two different views standard, which is has a header and a footer and then the other view which is no header and footer this one has a header and a footer now why do we why is it useful to have a header and a footer well the great thing about a header and a footer this is my header up here and if i scroll right down this is my footer down here and the beauty of having a header and a footer is everything i put into the header will appear on all pages so if i change this here from alan johnson to being walk with me, it appears on every single page. Okay, that changes on every page, not just on one page. And it says, um, personal life coach with you every step of the way. Okay, now I'm just going to stop that a second. That's in my header. And now if I go preview, go to my about page still here go to my services page still there go to my media page still there so whatever changes I make in my header will appear on every single page whatever change I make in my footer it will appear on every single page now that's a very nice way of dealing with that means if I change my menu here it changes it across the board if I turn around here and say listen um, I'm going to use this you say you know that's not my address my address is uh, Carl Brewer Street Dublin one. My phone number is plus three five three one four zero two four three nine seven is non-existent and my email address is patrick.horn at tudublin.ie okay um all of those things if i save and preview them preview for the moment i won't save them preview them for the moment if i go to about or if i go to media you can see that it changed on every page okay so I, that's the beauty of it. I only need to change my Facebook links. I'll talk about these in a while. Twitter, Instagram, and, and YouTube. You know, I only need to change them once and it will appear on every single page. So that's the beauty of what we have here um, with, the, with the header and the footer scenario. Okay, I'm going to go back in here to menus. And again, I'm still on settings with my home page. So my advice here with this one would be, you know, I wouldn't go changing whatever layout you have. Whatever one you've chosen to suit the template you've got, I'd stick with it. So header and footer is good, okay? Permissions. Now, in this case here, who can view this page? Everyone, password holders or members only. So that means you can password protect certain areas. 
In my case here, everyone's going to view this page. I, I'm not going to have a password protected area in here, but if you did, you just go into the second one here, and that means that that page will be password protected and so on. The next one here is your Google SEO, okay? Search engine optimization. Now we should know a little bit about this at this stage, okay? So um, what do you want for the page title, all right? My page title at the moment is called Home. What should it be? It probably should be Walk With Me. Um, and then I could have a subtitle. I could put in Home there if I wanted to, um, but I could also put in something like uh, your resource in Ireland. Okay. So your resource for hiking in Ireland, okay? So that would that could be the page title. That means that that's what Google sees my page title. It also means that that's what appears up in my title, title bar when I save this page. You can see that this is what also appears in in Google as a preview, okay? So I should spell it right, your resource for hiking in Ireland, okay? Um, then you've got a description. Now your description is, you know, depending on um, search engine is how much will allow you to type in there, but it is a description that appears in the search engine once somebody goes looking for your site. Um, so, it's good to put something in there. I have something already pre-typed out here for this, so a little bit on the lazy side, but or whatever way you want to look at it, okay? Um, it allows me this much, okay? I'm just gonna paste it in there. And now you can start to see what this looks like in Google, all right? So you, you should do this for absolutely every single page. Um, and obviously you can have a different title and a different description for every page. Um, you know, in this case here, I could put home here. Um, so something like that. And your resource for hiking in Ireland. And then for every other page, I have about and services and so on. So I could do that for every page. I'm not gonna do it for every page here, but you should, okay? The last option here under this is show this page in search results, okay? That means this is um, the no follow, um, no index thing that we talked about earlier on when we're dealing with your SEO audit. So do you want Google to be able to index this page and search this page? If you do, which most people do, you leave that ticked. If you don't, you untick it, okay? Social shares, all right? We can start looking at these later on. And advanced SEO, I really wouldn't worry about those at this point in time. So it's very important that we make sure that we've named our page correctly. And if you copy a page, you will have a, a strange name, which will be copy of page, whatever, okay? Make sure you name your page correctly and you do your SEO Google for, for all of your pages. So I would do that for all of them. In every case here, you go into uh, um, the different ones. Some of them are, are part of this page, so about services are part of that page. But it, with regards to media, you know, you'll see the name media here. I could set this as my home page, which would unset home as my home page. And I go into SEO Google and I turn around here and say media success coach. Um, media and walk with me. And you can have whatever you want, okay? Different, different subtitle or whatever, okay? So I would do that for every page. I'm not gonna do it for every page right now, but that's simply how it's done, okay? So now we've learned how to add a page We've learned how to um, delete a page. We've learned how to move a page and make one a, a sub page, okay? As in part of a sub menu on the, on, on the menu bar. So with that in mind, I'm gonna move on to backgrounds now. So I'm gonna to go to my home page here and just change my home page background. Okay, so in this case here, I'm gonna turn around and say, um, change my background. And 
you're allowed colors, images, or video. All right. So with this, colors will allow you to choose site colors, which there are um, 25 of. Now, that's not a huge amount. I can add a color, which allows us to pick 16.7 million colors, any color I want in here. Or if you're very specific about this, you can actually come along here and put in what's known as a, a hexadecimal color, which is if you are in something like um, Photoshop and you know the color you're dealing with, copy the actual name of the color, which is not green or blue, it'll be a hash and six digits um, and, and paste it in here. So you can see here the black is, is zero, zero, the white is full, full all the way across. And then the mixture of the other ones are different names and so on. But if we choose a color, we can, okay? We can pick a color from this. So if I wanted to do this, I could just turn, change it to green. It would change my background to green or whatever color I want. So if I came along here, add a color, and I want to use something like this, I could add that, okay? And that's my color of my background. So that's a very simple way of adding a color to it. Remember, contrast is important. Whatever color your text is, obviously I'm not gonna come along here and put in uh, you know, a, a black text and black background because then it's invisible, okay? Um, and in fact, as well as that, if you do that, Search engines won't like you either because they think you're trying to cheat them. So remember, if you're going to do this, a bit of contrast is always good. Okay. Next one up is images. Now, this there's a good bit about images worth looking at here. First of all, um, when we look at this first, you've got media from Wix, you've got Shutterstock, you've got Onsplash, and then you can add your own images up here as well. We'll have a quick look at the ones from Wix. Um, Wix has a, has a huge variety of images, which are great. And you might turn around and say, listen, what kind of images do I want? I, I want um, something to do with um, health and wellness because of what we're dealing with, or sport, okay? I can, I can check sport here and see if there's anything along the lines of what I'm looking for here. So if I'm talking about walk with me, you might be looking at something like this, okay? And you can say, oh, God, that's a beautiful image, and I just add that to it, okay? So... Literally all I did was double click it here and you can see that that absolutely is spectacular there. It works very well with, um, with my text because my text is white and the, the view is back, the background is, is, uh, is, is, is very light underneath the text. It works really, it's a spectacular uh, background, okay? So I'm just gonna go have a look at a few images first of all ones that are good, ones that are maybe bad, all right? Not so good because of my my text is, is, is black, okay? So of course I can change the color of my text and I'll show you that in a minute, but uh, um, you know, make sure that there is good contrast in this. So I just, just try a few more images here. Um, and again, if we're looking at the whole walk with me scenario here, Can see if there's anything down along here which is good for us skiers really more so than anything else but again another very good one there so there's loads of images so change your your image is based on on your different things so again we're looking at contrast here very very strong contrasting there okay so some very beautiful images all right um, I'm just going to choose an image here myself now. Shutterstock, um, again, Shutterstock are images that provide are provided here. Some of them will actually have, um, you know, um, watermarks in them and stuff like that. And on splash, another another one as well. Okay, so there's lots of different things that you can use there. I'm going to upload my own images here for a second. Okay, so I'm just going to go upload media. Now you can upload from your computer, which is probably the easiest way of doing it. I'm going to go to um, ones I've set up already. And website images, okay. So I've got images in here and I'm just gonna choose one like this one here. And you can see the image is uploading here. You'll see it, it it's uploaded there now. These are my images. Now this is the first image that I put in image I put in there. So at the moment 
there really there, there aren't anything else in there but i can add all my images in the one go if i want to if i want to what i'm going to do here is go in here and just say these are the images that i'm actually going to use over the next little while i can just go open them all add them all in there and it'll start uploading them all and you can see you know it'll quickly start appearing in here in a second okay and you can see all my images appearing there so you know as you've seen i've created a folder on my desktop or on my computer that actually had these images in here and you can upload them all at the one time so it kind of saves you having to go and say have i got them uploaded or whatever um not finished yet just wait till the last few of them are uploaded there's only a couple left okay and you can see all these images are uploaded and these are images of uh of of different hiking trails and stuff like that so things that are going to be of use to me um now so i've uploaded my images what i'm going to do is i'm going to choose this one here of on top connemara okay and put that in there as my as my background for this this particular page and you can see as you can see it's it works really well okay so i'm going to come back and change my text in a few minutes but that's just my my image background i'm going to jump into media the media page and add a different background to this one okay i just want to do something here um to show you what can happen if things go wrong i think this is no harm in doing this so i'm just going to go into images here and i'm going to add an image this time which um you know maybe doesn't work all that well okay so if i just add this image here all right now looking at this you might say to yourself yeah that works okay when i preview it just give me a second here to preview it here but what it's after doing there is, I don't know if you can see this from the video, but it's after pixelating my, my image. So in other words, it's after stretching the image uh, so it will fit this space here. And because of that, it's after, you know, the, the resolution of the image is after being stretched and, and uh, it's, you know, the image is, is lower quality than it needs to be. So I'm just going to go back to this for a second back into the editor i'm going to go back to my background i'm going to go into settings now and with settings what i can do is i can there's a number of different things i can deal with first one is opacity now the opacity means how opaque my image is so i can actually fade it down a bit so maybe it's like a watermark in the background okay the color behind my image if i wanted to make the color behind my image like this now you'll notice when i do fade it down the screen will become more blue than it was before and so on okay if this is up to 100 this really makes no difference next one is freezing the page or parallaxing the page okay now i'm going to show you the difference between the two of these if i freeze this here a second it means that my actual image is the size of this section here if i parallax it it makes it bigger um, but we kind of need a little bit of, of screen to be able to see how this one works Parallaxing makes it look like the actual image moves a little bit behind it, if you see, okay? So freezing it doesn't. Um, back into settings here. Positioning scaling. This is very interesting because if at this point in time my image is filling the background, if I go tile, what it does is it actually, you can see the size of my actual image here. And if I leave it like this, what it will do is it will tile my image. So in other words, it doesn't fill the, the size of the screen. So it keeps repeating my image across here and down here until it fills the screen. Now, this image, while it's better quality like this, and you can see the resolution is better, the fact that it's tiling looks absolutely awful here. Now, that does not mean that all images look awful when they're tiled. They don't, because some images are set out and uh, designed in order to be tiled this one is not one of them okay so they're the only two options there you will see other options with different images this one isn't big enough for other things and then position them from we can say the top right so in other words it starts up here and so on or you know the positions down along whatever so if i go back here to go fill and then go position them from this you can see that the image should sw switch a little bit okay and you can see the position of it is different all right and this works very well with a relatively large image again this is not a good example of an image and i deliberately put it in there to show you that it doesn't really work all that well so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go back to 
um, this section here. I'm going to move on to video here. Now, videos, I don't actually have any video uploaded here. I'll be using video later on, but I'll be using it from YouTube, which we've created somewhere else. But anyway, um, but I'm going to go into media from Wix. I'm going to look at the videos they have. So I'll just show you examples of these. These are videos here. If I just put this one in there, Snowy Mountain, all right? Now, and I preview it. Click on preview here. And as you can see, you can see the, the mist rising over the mountain. It's, it's very subtle, but then again, you don't want the video in the background that's going to be um, erratic or, you know, in your face. So I'll just go back in here um, and I will go into backgrounds again and add a video here again. And I've typed in mountain up here on top. So if you can see the mountain ranges and so on. So, um, mountain landscapes. And there's lots of different videos you can add to it. Remember your color schemes. Remember your, your design features on your website as well. Okay, so might be very wary if you're going to use videos because it it does take a little bit of time to obviously download the video and it might slow down your content and so on within your page. So be very careful with that because um, as well as that, it might take away from what's happening on your screen. So as you can see with this one, it's taking a little bit of time for it to actually load the video on there. Then it will eventually kick off. But it will have, um, you know, it will it will take away from um, your bandwidth as well. So I'm just going to go back in here and it's very simple to add a video. But as I quite often say, just because you can add something doesn't mean you should add something. So I'm going to go back in here to images and I'm going to add one of my own images here to this background here. And the one I'm looking for here is um, this one here, Hill Walking. And you can see there it's a it's a vista of a man not looking over his land okay so i'm going to use that as my background for this particular one here so we're after looking at colors images video and then with the settings of each one okay um you can apply this to every single page apply to other pages will apply to your entire website if you want to use the one background across the whole lot or if you want to use different ones you can do it individually by page okay so that concludes the first part of our Wix um, presentation. So I'll move on with the next ones and I'll start adding different elements to the page.